Hello everybody, happy Friday. It's nice to be back. It's, in, it's three weeks since we were back before, we were with you before. Um, so it's been so hot. I don't think anyone's going to join us this afternoon. It's too hot to be sitting inside. We've I don't got, know, it's too hot to be sitting outside. It is actually, that's very true actually. That's very true. We were, um, we're going to go into the Habby room, but I've had a sewing school there all week. It's a bit of a mess, funnily enough. But also we had all the trouble with the lights last time, didn't we? So we're in, in, the, in the Habby room again and with the windows open and the fans on. So sorry if there's a bit of background noise. So, what have you all been up to? Do say hello if you're watching. Let me see if I can get my screen to work. Oh, it's all frozen. Do say hello if you're there. You're on, um, should be on Instagram and Facebook. So hello to both. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at Facebook and Amy's looking at Instagram. Yeah. So. Some people yeah, coming on. Oh, I think I need to. You know what? Because my, my, I need to log into this Claire's Threads account. Don't I? That's what I need to do. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> I just get, we were so just doing some admin today. over there. We were sitting here thinking, gosh, we're so early. Look at us being on time. And then. <laughs> you weren't ready. Oh, I wasn't ready. We were literally sat here for about five minutes. Yeah. Going, oh, this yeah. is very unusual. It is, isn't it? So yeah, do say hello if you're watching. It's always nice to catch up with you on a Friday, find out what you've all been up to. We can chat about what uh, we've been up to as well. Oh, Barbie's here. She says, oh, hi. hi. Super busy with custom work and bridal alterations. Making a batch of cookies this morning. Oh, very good. For her boyfriend's mum's birthday. Oh, that's so kind. That's lovely, Barbie. I've been watching your alterations. Brilliant, all your alterations. I love watching uh, all your... Um, in progress alterations it's great so we've had actually we've had a very busy time the last few weeks but um we had our open day so just before we saw you last week we had our open day didn't we yeah our exhibition which was really good so thank you to everyone who came along to that it was a, such a good fun day it, it was so busy wasn't it it was like yeah. day. one minute we were just over the doors next minute it was hopper school yeah so it went so quickly so it's lovely for all of our um ladies on the dressmakers portfolio to show off the fantastic work and we had Francis from the Makers Atelier at Victoria from Bloomsbury Square. So we had a really good fun day. Uh, and, uh, oh, hi, Claire. Hi, Claire. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. This is my uh, dress that we've just finished on the latest sew along. And Claire was on the sew along as well. So, hi, Jilly. Hi, Jilly. What about to bring your patio? It feels like that here. <laughs> oh, very good. She's pretty washing her fabric. Hi, Nan. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Mum. How are you? It's nice and cool in your living room, but it is. It's really, it's very warm here. Oh, Barbie's making Scottish shortbread cookies. Oh, how lovely! How lovely! I'm very jealous. Very jealous. So the open day was fantastic. It was such a fun day. It was really good. Really, really good. Uh, and then I've had a, I've been doing a few workshops since then. You may have seen some pictures. We did the um, working with Maison Fauve, the uh, French pattern company. Some lovely garments were made on that workshop. And then we had a week of making blazers lovely blazers were made and we had our weekend sewing school and uh, some of the ladies who were on the blazer workshop were also on the weekend sewing school so they got to finish their jackets let and us know if you can hear mum okay or if yeah. she needs to speak up because we've got the windows open today oh, so yes. there might be a bit of traffic noise yeah, let me know if you can on facebook if the sound's okay oh there's lisa oh. hi lisa How hi lisa nice to see you thanks for joining us hi janet Hi, I'm Janet. a journalist in <laughs> Oh, in a car park. I bet it's very hot in a car park. She's in the Kettle Market Garden. She's going to that Turkish restaurant opposite the Kettle Market. Oh, nice. Night. So I look forward to hearing how that is, Janet. That should be uh, that should be nice. I've had really good. I've really had really good reports about that restaurant. Um, and then what we've done this week? We have a three-day uh, sewing school, summer sewing school this week. So everybody making different things, really fantastic things. It's really lovely. Finished at four o'clock this afternoon. So um, that was that's been a really great week, and we finished our sew along this week for this lovely dress, which is a lovely, lovely loose dress, fantastic for today. Perfect, I've been isn't walking it? Walking around all day in my dress, so it's lovely. It's actually my favourite dress. Yeah, I it's, love it. It's really good, and we did all the. You know, the last live I showed you how to do gathering by zigzagging over cord. That's why I've had to do lots of that on this dress because you have it on the underneath here, on the sleeves, and also on the shoulders here. There's gathering as well, so uh, lots of gathering on this dress so if you make it it's great it's um this one McCall 7969 this pattern here so there's lots of variations and if you look on instagram on hashtag 7969 you'll see 
think so many people have made it in lots of different uh, lots of different styles, different fabrics. Hi Sally. Hi Sally. Oh, made, made it, it back super fast. Well done, Sally. Sally was on the sewing school this week, making lovely clothes for her grandchildren. They were fantastic. Uh, and also doing lots of embellishment as well, weren't you, Sally? It was really good fun playing with the machine embroidery and piping and things. So, yeah, really pretty, really lovely little outfits. I think there's some pictures on Mitter's sewers already of Sally's got there are. she made. Very pretty. Really lovely. So, yeah, fantastic. Really busy few weeks. Very good, all good fun being back in the sewing after our, our epic trip away. Um, and then coming up next week, we have, we're making the Eva dress, the Tasuti Eva dress next week, two days making a dress. And then we have bra making. Oh, thank you, Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Suzanne's on the same course as well. Love the picture of your dress, Suzanne, that, that you've made for your uh, daughter in law. It's lovely. Really lovely. Hi, Justine. Hi, Justine. Oh, lovely. Going out for dinner. How nice. That's I want to go out for dinner. Oh, I know. Lovely. <laughs> Chris, if you're watching, should we go out for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good plan. Um, yes, yeah, so we're next week. We've got the eager dress. We've got bra making next week. It's a day bra making. We're sewing with stretch fabrics, uh, and then we have the Elvis workshop. The um, lovely pattern by this one here. I stay lovely dar vintage. Uh, the Elvis, and you can either make the jumpsuit or you can make a dress. Uh, or you can actually make a jacket. We didn't realize I got the pattern, but it's quite a nice pattern for a little jacket. Oh, it's a nice jacket. Nice, isn't it? Speaking so, of Elvis, I saw the movie this week. Oh, you did, didn't you? What did you think? I loved it so much. And then yesterday, when I was making bridesmaids dresses, I listened to the soundtrack from the movie, which is even better. Oh, how so brilliant. good! It's like all these modern singers like singing Elvis. Oh. Uh, oh, hi, Catherine. How are you? How did you get on with your dress? Because Catherine was going to take her dress apart off from the sewing on this one and make it smaller. Oh, Cynthia says, hi, I'm in a stationary queue on the M25. Oh, Cynthia. Oh, no, oh, not no. in this heat. I hope you've got good air con in your car. Yes. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Nice to see you. Yeah, Cynthia was here on the sewing so school this week making lovely things, lots of lovely things. So, yeah, Elvis is next weekend. Still space on that one if you fancy doing that. Making the, either the jumpsuit or the dress. Uh, or the jacket, even. I quite like the dress. Um, anyway, that's, uh, that's one. We've actually got some of the So La Di Da patterns in stock now. I don't think I've put them on the website yet. Uh-oh. Anyway, there, I've got them on the website. We've got the, uh, the Stevie dress, which is always very popular, that lovely Stevie dress. Similar to this one, um, but it's just got a V-neck rather than the crossover. Uh, but it's got the gathers. And the Muse dress. I really like this dress. If you know the company Vampire's Wife, very similar to a Vampire's Wife dress. Um, the Duchess of Cambridge often wears a Vampire's Wife dress. Promise the machine, that sort of thing. So, um, or oh, Catherine saying she shrunk the dress is much better. Ah. Oh, they. Oh, I knew uh -oh. you were doing that. Yeah. So Justin, Suzanne, uh -oh. and Catherine went to Mad Jacks this morning for more fabric. Well. I'm very pleased, Catherine, that you have jumped into the stash building yes. fabric. Because I'm pretty sure when you first started coming here, you were like, I'm only buying for oh, the I projects need. I'm making. Yes. <laughs> and now you've come over to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> well, a group of ladies went to see uh, Mr. Rosenberg earlier this week as well, I think. Uh, and there may have been a bit of stash building there, I think, as well, wasn't there? Oh, Justine. Oops. <laughs> I like a good oops fabric buying moment. <laughs> Have we? I look forward to seeing those then. Just I nearly had pictures. one of those oops in Bloomsbury this week because Victoria's been buying lots more fabric for oh, Bloomsbury some Square. There's some gorgeous new fabrics arrived. So I had to keep my blinkers on when I was working there on Wednesday. Yes, I've seen the sample. Actually, we now we also we have fabrics from Bloomsbury Square here uh, by the meter, but um, cut pieces, but also Amy's bringing up samples of all the new fabrics. So when you come here, you can see what's new at Bloomsbury Square. Oh, Suzanne says she was very good. When you say you were very good, Suzanne, does that mean you just bought less than you did on Wednesday? <laughs> uh, oh, Catherine says that secret's out. Trying to keep up with my sewing friends. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is, once you find a few patterns that you like, Catherine, it's easy to just make the same thing a few times. So that's, that's what I always think if you're stash busting. But like Suzanne does, actually, she makes she finds a pattern that she likes and then makes it in lots of different fabrics and then. Uh, it's really good fun, and you get you get better at it. Better I'm definitely going to do that for this McCall's pattern. Yeah, it's a good dress. Going to make it again. I love like the sleeves on this. We were saying today it's a great because they're big sleeves, but they're just the right length so they don't get in the washing up or in your food or anything. Ah, oh, there you go. You see, I knew you wouldn't have bought nothing. 
<laughs> Barbie said the bonus to having a great stash is that you can shop for fabric at any given time yes. to start a new project, you even know. in the middle of the night. Yes, we decided it was a collection last night when the sale and we were talking about it. I said, well, some people collect china plates. Yeah. Or or little animals, but we collect fabric. We do. So it's our collection. Catherine, I'm venturing away from my calico wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Wearable twirls now, I think. Yeah. Catherine. Wearable twirls. This was a, this is a wearable twirl. I wasn't sure whether I, whether it would suit me or not really because I'm I'm not used to. I don't wear much with gathers. But really suits I you. I love it. Yeah, I really love it. And I think yeah. You might have to stand up and do a little. Twirl. I'll do a little twirl. Let me show you. Because it is go. very flattering. Oh, my chair. Can you see that? Yeah. Look, it's very wafty. Very wafty. It's lovely for this very hot day today. I do think you could do with pockets though. I know, I regret not putting that? pockets yeah, in. Yeah, I did it all with French seams. There's no pockets on the pattern. Yeah, I um, really wish I'd put pockets in mine. Yeah. And it actually, it is, this crossover is lovely, but it's very low. So I have put a stitch in. Just to be safe. Mine stays now. Yes, you have to be quite careful though. But I have to be careful. Yeah. Thank you, Jackie. It's a lovely pattern. Uh, yeah, Lisa says, what's the it. pattern number again? It is um, 7969. There we go. It's that one there, 7969. And like I say, if you look on Instagram, lots of people, it's one of those dresses that everyone's making at the moment. So, And if you use my technique that we did last, last time, zigzagging over the cord, all of these gathers, all the rounds on the sleeve and everything, so much easier. Thank you, Jilly. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. And Nikki liked her dress. Yeah, so you can, you can stick, you could stick. That's it, Lisa, yeah, 7969. Seven, um, so if you look on Instagram, actually some people, actually Philippa, who's on the sew along, she lengthened this seam and made this down to the waist. So that's another option. You could lengthen her together on the waist. I've seen it um, um, as a top as well. Yeah, I've seen it as a top. Um, and a couple of ladies made, instead of having the um, sleeve with the band, she's made the loose sleeves. So it's very versatile. But what's really, I think what's really flattering are these gathers on the shoulder. Of yeah, my hair I like back. that. It's such a nice neckline with the gathers. Yeah, that's and it what just I like. stays, it just sits there. Even though it's a really big, baggy dress, it actually makes you look really slim. It doesn't move as well. It doesn't yeah. move. It's so really I always actually feel like I'm slimmer. Yeah. Look slimmer than I am. <laughs> so it would work in all sorts of fabric. Good. So there you go. That's our latest recommendation. Our next sew along. We're not. We're not doing one until September. But we've got a little bit, a little bit going on between now and then. Yeah. Um. Uh. So we're uh, we're going to do the um Friday pattern company patina blouse, which is another one that a lot of people are making at the moment. It's the it's a nice uh, shaped blouse with a sort of shaped V neck and a long collar. So that very fashionable shaped collar. Uh, so we're going to do that on the sew along. I think it starts on the 26th of September. So you want to join me on Zoom on Thursday evenings. It's on the website underneath the un online classes. Suzanne's saying you asked it. But we have, <laughs> we have <laughs> Thank you, Suzanne. We have, I mean, since we got back from the cruise, we may have been eating a bit healthier. We have. We're doing a bit of a keto. We're on keto. Keto, so, yeah. Hopefully so, we disappear slightly. Yeah, it might be back to pre-cruise weight. <laughs> <laughs> it might be back lower than that. <laughs> 13 centimetres of oh, oh, I thought it was only going to be 10, Claire. 13? I think Claire's going to wear hers tomorrow. We've got our garden party tomorrow. And Claire was talking about having a costume change halfway through. Oh, very good. Yes, I think that's very I good. I like that idea. Yes. I mean, the dress, the outfit I'm planning to wear, I'm feeling like I might be too hot in it now. Oh, no, that's what I was thinking. Might have, to, might bring, have to take this with us. Might have to take this with us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hi, hi Sally. Sally. Nice to see you. Thank you. Sorry you can't join us tomorrow, but it's nice you joined us this afternoon. What have you been up to? What have you been making? I haven't seen you for ages. Sally was on the cruise with us and we haven't seen her for ages. So, yes, we've got to, um, what else we've got coming up? I'm cruising my way. Oh, yes, I'm going to talk about what you've all been up to. I've been following you on Midhurst Sewers. You've all been very busy. Lots of lovely pictures up on Midhurst Sewers. Uh, if you want to have a look at what everyone's been making. Suzanne has finished the garment she started on the cruise. So, the pyjamas, lovely Caroline pyjamas, and a nice pair of palazzo pants we've put up. Um, and also Suzanne's blazer. So Suzanne put on the blazer workshop and made uh, using the Maker's Atelier blazer pattern, a fantastic jacket with fabric from Mr. Rosenberg with shoes on it. And when you first look at it, you don't realise it's shoes. When you look closely, it's lots of shoes. So have a look at Suzanne's fabulous blazer. You can't even see the pockets, they're ma pattern matched so well. It's fantastic. Uh, Tanya's been making some Eva dresses. That's the one we're making here next week, the Tasuta Eva dress. 
love it on a wafting dress i think that's a very good flattering dress sally um hi jay thanks hi, for jane. joining us nice to see you um sally made some of the uh, clam bags that like the ones that lisa lovely lisa made for us on after the new york trip as a, a change from dressmaking sally decided to make bags so she was so inspired by lisa's lisa and helen's bag making and they look great i think that's it sally's sally's hooked now on bag making um and there oh we had the this lovely pictures from the maison vogue workshop mary made the lovely i think it's the zenith it's the one with the darts coming up in a lovely green fabric from fabric godmother and louise made the marissa blouse and maggie made this the zart the Zar trench coat that was so cool which was very impressive now just you know just to let you know maggie didn't make that in a day <laughs> <laughs> maggie did take the pattern home beforehand and get as far as she could before the workshop and then just came and uh, nearly finished it on the day but it's a lovely shape the maison Vogue czar trench coat and we have got a trench coat workshop coming up actually in the autumn so if you fancy making that or another style of trench coat have a look on the website i think it's in might be november but, um, oh janet oh. great summer sewing school these last few days claire is so good at rescuing us from our mistakes i sorted you all out didn't i kept you all going <laughs> Oh, is there still space on the winter coat workshop in two weeks? There is, yes. <gasps> Hopefully I've finished all the bridesmaids dresses because I really need to make my winter coat. You do. You should come, yeah, you should join that one. Oh, hi Esther. Oh, Esther's been to Liberty today. Hi. Oh, I love Liberty. How lovely. Did you do a bit of stash building in Liberty, Esther? <laughs> oh, this Maggie. Yes, you're talking about your coat, Maggie. It was very good, your coat. We loved it. Really lovely. Um, yeah, so there was the, the picture from Maison Faux. Um, and uh, who else has been posting pictures? Louise posted her avid seamstress top. Love that. Uh, which was from, which she started quite a while ago, but finished on the sewing school. Uh, and today there's been pictures up today. Janet's posted her sew along dress today. And Sally's posted her grandchildren's dresses. Suzanne posted her sew along dress as well. So it's great seeing what you've all been making. So yeah, if you want to see what everyone's, you know, join with her sewers and on Facebook and have a look and then post pictures of your own mates. It's always nice to see what everyone's doing. You can also ask advice. I think Julie's just put a question up about overlockers. Oh, Jackie, you finished your blazer. Excellent, you must post a picture. Yes, that was a makes atelier pattern, wasn't it? I think it's a makes atelier that Jackie was making. Great pattern. Um, yeah, do post some pictures. Julie was asking questions about some different types of overlockers so you can always ask advice and see what everyone thinks i think julie was asking about which one people like between the juki air threader and the janoni and i only have experience with the janoni one um so and it's very good it is really good and i think sally scott's got the janoni uh, air threader as well quite a few people have got that one so it's a good good value one but i know juki are very popular i haven't used it though so i can't Esther said, oh yes, took a while to decide on what fabric, and thanks to you I can now spot a Stella McCartney bag. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what they look like. <laughs> oh, but it was the heather blazer, that's right Jackie, I knew it was a similar shape, but yeah, the heather one. Friday, Friday we love the Friday Pattern Company pattern, they do have a good size range as well, mm. so they go from a nice small size up to a bigger size as well. So that's what everyone's been up to. Anyone else been making things to tell us about? In the post pictures? Always good to see what you've been up to. We, Amy and I have been quite busy. So we have got Alice's wedding coming up. So in between workshops, Amy's making bridesmaids dresses and I've been making Alice's wedding dress. So there's a lot of weddings. Only it's four weeks. Four weeks from yesterday. Yeah, four wedding. weeks yesterday. Four weeks. So, yeah. In fact, today I haven't done a lot of work. I've been wedding planner. Yes, you have been wedding planner. <laughs> yeah. So yes, it's been. It's not long. Not long. Oh, Jilly's looking at the jerky because it has pictures. An easy learning LED screen. Oh, okay. oh, oh here we go. Got Julie the likes there. the L nut. Suzanne's got the baby lock. So oh no, Jilly, you might have to wait till you come to the show in the autumn and try them all out. And sometimes you get a deal. Yeah, it's always good when you're looking for new machines, come into the, like the Knitting and Stitching Show at Ali Pally, uh, because a lot of the companies are there and you can try them all out. And they might have to That's our next event. Deals. It is, isn't it? Ali Pally. Ali in October. After the wedding. 
<laughs> yeah, we can't think post wedding at the moment. Everything's after wedding. So is everybody. Oh, dear. oh, oh bye, right. Janet. Bye, Janet. Have, Have a lovely, lovely dinner. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Claire loves her juki, but it's not an air threader because it's great. Um, Suzanne is saying, oh, Sony Sunshine, I've got 10% off at the moment. Oh, there we go. The, the Scirocco jumps. Oh, and uh, a couple of people are making that. Barbara, Barbara, yeah, Barbara made that. In a, it's a stretch one, isn't it, Julian? It's, it's really flattering, that jumpsuit. Barbara made a couple of those. Julie, yes, I think that's what I better do. It is good, Julie, because you get to practice on them all. So you yeah. can go around and spend a day just having, every, having all the sales mm. reps teaching you how to yeah, use it. it is good. I think uh, if you... I always think with overlockers, it's good to buy um, the top of your budget. It is one that you you won't get. You won't need to buy another overlocker. They don't they don't really break. You know they sort of they sort of you know they just get better and better. And the more expensive ones you get, the easier they are to thread. Which is why the air the air threaders are the ones to go for if you have that sort of budget. Well, Lisa so. says she's going to Festival of Quilts next weekend. So if you wanted to go to that, Jilly, all uh, the machine one, companies yeah. will be at, at the NEC next weekend. Uh, Brenda, oh, hi, hi Brenda. Brenda. Well, it's B. <laughs> Oh, hi, B. Brenda I is it's B. It's funny, isn't it? We yeah. Always, I always look at Brenda and I'm like, extremely hot day in North London. Yes, I bet it is up there. I know. We'd have loved to see you too, B. It would be. Be nice. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll see you next year. Yeah, really well, we're seeing you twice, aren't we? Yes. Uh, Mace Telly. Uh, yeah, I think, you well. I think you're coming yeah. to Mace Telly, aren't you? But you're coming on the cruise. Yeah. Very exciting. I know. And we'll give you updates on those things when she comes in. Yeah. All those, those events coming up. So the other thing we've got coming up, what else is coming up? Oh, there we go. They, uh, Lisa's got the Gloria, Baby Lock Gloria. That's the combined cover stitch machine, isn't it, Lisa? That's the Baby Lock combined one. Um, coming up in a uh, end of September, we have the Dressmakers Portfolio. So if you came to the open day, you'll have seen all the late, lovely ladies' work, the Dressmakers Portfolio. There's still space on that at the moment. Um, it's a six month course on building your confidence uh, in sewing. So we have tutorials twice a month you get 24 workshop days uh, so you can come to any workshop of your choice we do trips we go to things like the Savile Row tour in London at the DNA Museum so if you fancy coming along and uh, building your confidence in sewing that's the one to do just make us put it level two uh, just because it's a sort of uh, beginners to intermediates so it's not about you can come in as a beginner and completely learn from scratch but you can come in if you just want to improve your skills and gain confidence as well so if you want to know more about that, it's on the website, or you can always give me a call. Um, I might do um, some more information about that um, coming up soon. So that's the first Makers Portfolio. It starts in September. Um, what else have we got? New Sew Along, I've mentioned already, the Patina Blouse. Also got the, you may have seen this already, because it came out since we were on, the new uh, Makers Telly 8 magazine is out. Um, for those of you that are not subscribers, that's out now. Fantastic pattern. I love this pattern. It looks it's really got, nice um, actually. It's I love a that. crossover front and it's got a it's got elastic at the waist here so you can wear it uh, with a skirt and you've got to tuck it in and just sit. Bye Jilly. Oh bye. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> yeah, see you next week, Jilly. I've put that pattern by for you by the way. Um, so we'll see you see you next week. Um, yeah, so it's a lovely blouse with a lot you know, this season's lovely puff sleeves as well. Really great. Really love that. I've already got two fabrics that I want to make that in. Of course you do. There's lots of articles in here as well. Another, another great magazine. Um, it's all about, it's got articles about behind the fashion shows and things like that. Um, and I might have done an article about altering shoulders. Because this, this is one of the few uh, garments that Francis has designed that has a sleeve that fits to the shoulder. So if that measurement is not right for you, I've done an article about how to alter the shoulder on the garment. So that's in there as well. And also there's lots of lovely pictures. Uh, you may have seen on the next atelier and Rosenberg's um, uh, Instagram pages about their collaboration. This fabric here is a Rosenberg fabric. Um, and this lovely shirt, I've actually, I actually bought this fabric. If you watched our fabric stash from earlier this year, I bought this fabric. I haven't made it up yet, and now that's making me really want to make it. So I have that fabric um, in my stash. It's a lovely silk. So a lovely collaboration between Rosenberg's or Stitch Fabrics, you'll know them on the website. And yeah, and again, lots of inspiration of different ways to use the Mediterranean patterns. So that's out now, the Mediterranean magazine. I think that came out, I think the, the, the day of the open day, wasn't it, that one came mm. out. 
So that's uh, really worth getting all stuff in Vegetarian Magazine. A um, couple of new patterns have just come out. Star Lark have brought a new press uh, pattern out today. I think it is the Jerry pattern. Oh, Lisa um, said Rosenberg's going to Lincoln ooh, on 13th and 14th of October. That's exciting, Lisa. Maybe some stash building. It'll be right after Ali Pali, that. Yeah, it will, won't it? Yeah. Lovely. Um, yeah, have a look at the Star Lark Jerry dress. I used to have a dress like that. It's a sleeveless, like a denim dress with seams, princess seams, bunch mm. of them. Um, but you can make it anything, but I just, it sort of lends itself to denim because you could do top stitching on it. Um, so have a look at that. It's a really nice dress. They've also brought out some a children's skirt, teen, they call it the teen skirt, which is like a, a very yoke and a gallant skirt. So quite a sort of trendy. Oh, in the limo. They might need the limo to put all the fabric in here. Yeah. Buy, Lisa. And yes, Rosenberg's at the Festival of Quilts as well. I know he does that one as well, doesn't he? He's all over the place. He mm. gets the about place. that, Rosenberg. He does, he does. So yeah, have a look at the um, new style art patterns. Also, we've been talking quite a lot about a pattern company, Pattern Fantastique. So you love their patterns. We were talking this week about their, they've done a hat, Cynthia had made their hat, the uh, Sulis hat, which is like, it's a fabric on, um, it's got a really wide brim. But you can make it and then you can roll it up and put it in your bag and we take it to mm. make one actually. We'll do a workshop in the Sulis hat. But another couple of really nice things. I love their, uh, the Fen shirt, which is a nice boxy shirt. And also their Meris dress, which has a similar, armhole to this but it's a really interesting shape so if you like something a bit unusual have a look at pattern fantastic patterns i really love those uh, i haven't seen many other deals about actually deals not many i haven't seen many coming through apart no. from like the one that um uh suzanne mentioned about sony sunshine anyone else missed any deals on patterns or fabrics i know fabrics good law do their um their cheeky deal on a Friday, but it's it's lovely fabrics that they are furnishing for oh, this totally. week. Not necessarily a deal, but New Craft House had a big delivery of silk velvet this week Ooh. in some amazing colours. I don't know what the price is, I haven't looked on their website. They only launched last night and their fabrics often sell out very fast. So mm. if you're after some silk velvet for the winter, have a look at New Craft House. I saw uh, the website. Um, I think it was the Club House. I've got some extra wide linen as well. So mm. Club House on National Mills. Have I missed the Linton summer sale? I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen no, the Linton haven't seen sale yet. No, I haven't seen the Linton sale, Catherine. Don't worry. We will. We will post it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a Linton sale, we'll let you know. After we've done our bit of shopping first. Obviously, obviously yeah. Obviously. So we get all the best bits first. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. I have too well, much. I know, I'm just thinking I've got about four bits. I yeah, I do not have. I have too much Linton. I don't think you can ever have too much Linton. It's so well, pretty. I know. I actually need to make it though. That's the problem. Yeah, it is pretty. So what other news have I got for you? Oh, very, that's a bit of sad news. Village Haberdashery have closed down. Did you see that? Village Haberdashery uh, in London uh, have had to close down. They, the landlord put the rents up and they just couldn't um, couldn't stay. So that's very sad. They had an online shop and she's not she's closed everything, the online shop and the physical store. So very sad. Oh, Village yes, Haberdashery. Judy, we love Till the Sun Goes Down. We worked with lots of her patterns. Mm. Um, the vintage sewing school we run here is with all of her patterns. We've we know yeah, Andre I've, very I've, well. I've made the beach pajamas. They're very good. Hi, Mary from the USA. Oh, hi, Mary. We miss you too. Oh yeah. Oh, what's it like being back to normal life? It's difficult, isn't it, after our wonderful trip? It oh, like Bee's got a parcel from Rosenberg due to be delivered tomorrow. Oh, there was a question there. I didn't, but it jumped if I up. So, so it up. Will it work in the non? No, it's really the stretch fabrics, Bee. That one. It what pattern is it? Sorry, the wrap dress. The makes atelier wrap yeah, dress. Yeah, makes atelier wrap dress. No, oh, it yeah. really is for stretch because there's no darts or shaping or anything. It wouldn't sit nicely at all in a very good wrap woven. dress that is good for woven. I've just made for a bridesmaid's dress is mm. the um, high, but it's called uh, Ali Olsen, the Highlands wrap dress. You haven't got that one here, have you? Uh, no, I think I sent it home. Oh, oh maybe I do. Let me get another look. It is a really good, it's one. really good pattern. Yeah, it is. So yeah, just, just put it, clicking back. Sorry, Julie. Yes, the um, the beach pajamas, great pattern. I've made those. Um, oh, Suzanne saying that Sherwoods have got twenty nine percent off, and I think somebody had put something about Gatsby Garney having a summer scorcher as well. So oh, there are some deals. That's good. Oh, there we go. Look, this is the one. Uh, Amy just made this for a. It's difficult to see it from the picture, but Ali Olsen wrap dress. That's a very nice one. Yeah, sure, I'll hold it up. For one, 
It's also got cup Ali sizes. Olsen. Yeah. Uh, it's got cup sizes as well, so it's a very good one for a woven fabric. And it made up really nicely, didn't it? Really nice. It's got some really interesting details. It's got a little bit of elastic in the back to pull it in. Mm. And it's done up with buttons, and then the tie is like a mock Yeah, so it wraps over wrap. and, tie and buttons on the inside, then you have a tie. So, so, so. very nice for wovens. Yeah. Oh, 20%, not 29. I thought 29 was a bit dodgy, but then a bit you know, random. Sherwoods, Sherwoods do that sort I think of Sherwoods thing, have they? a continuous sale. Yeah, they do. They do. So I'm going to do a little, uh, I'm not going to do a demo today. Well, I'm going to do a demo, but I'm going to do a little talk about pins today. We've been doing, people have been in, in the same room and saying, what, you know, what pins do I need? And I thought, well, actually, there's a lot of choice on pins. So I thought I'd run through all the different types of pins that you can get for your dressmaking. And what you would, um, oh, there you go. Lisa's You're going, welcome, Bea. Oh, Lisa's got 30 meter. Oh, Lisa, you got, you got the 30 meter floral. Oh, yes, oh. she was posting it in our New York group. Yeah, Little you can remember that. Yeah. I got the, yeah, the white, the white one um, that I bought, the white with the blue pattern. Actually, I need to make a camera under that as well. So yeah, we're going to talk pins this afternoon. Just talk about pins and all the different ones you will need uh, for your different projects. Because once you start dressmaking, you know what it's like. A lot of ladies, when they first come here, they have an old packet of rusty pins in their sewing box. That's not going to last very long. Um, <laughs> like, because... Not with Claire Tyler around. <laughs> the well, pin you know, police. <laughs> the, thing, the thing is, once you start sewing, you want things that are going to make your life easier. And having the right tools definitely will make your life easier. So, oh, bye, um, Esther. Happy anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary, Esther. See you next week for bra making. Um, yeah, so uh, I want to talk to you about, about pins uh, and then, you know, add to your collection. You don't have to buy everything at once like everything. You have to buy everything at once. You're just going to add to your collection as you go through. So Amy's going to come in so I can actually show you some pins and I'll some pin cushions and everything to do with pins today we're going to talk about. So we're going to start off with everyday pins. Now I like to use glass headed Oops. pins. Um, glass headed pins. And the reason I like to use glass headed pins is because they are easy to see when you are when you're um, they're in your fabric. They're easy to grab hold of. And if you are pressing, you can actually press over these heads without them melting. So I much prefer to use glass headed pins as opposed to plastic headed pins and we do two different lengths these are my sort of everyday ones these are the prim ones and they are I can't remember how long these ones are the labels on the front of the box I'm going to just turn it over and show you the label um, so these ones are uh, 60 millimeters long so they're quite a nice length for fine fabrics and then we also do an extra long glass headed pin and these are 44 um, 65 millimeters long so these are nicer for thicker fabrics but again actually I'll get one out here because they are um, a bit longer these are the longer ones so we have the shorter ones and the longer ones here for different dressmaking projects but like I say if you've got glass headed ones they're not gonna um, get lost in your fabric and also they're much easier to see if they fall on the floor um, so that's the other good thing about having a pin with a round head like that um, so those are your two basic glass headed pins I put my list under there so I don't miss oh. anything. There we go. The other pins you can get are silk pins. These are very fine. So when you're working with a this is standard fabric, these are your nice general, you know, glass headed pins. Um, if you have any rusty pins, throw them in the bin or put them in a sharps box. Don't keep pins that are slight have got a slight catch. If your pin goes through your fabric and has a slight catch, throw it away. I know what it's like, you just take it out of your fabric and put it back in your pin dish but really that will be the one you pick up every time if you do that so nice sharp glass headed pins are perfect for your projects if you're working with a fine fabric like a silk then you want something a bit finer these are the clo clover silk pins I keep these separate they come in a little box and I keep them in a little box because I don't want them mixed it up with my everyday pins um, they're red and white ones so I can really keep them separate and they'll just glide through your silk and hold it. They're much finer aren't they? They're much finer yeah these ones are, I can't remember if it gives you a, 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 a 
this is their 5.5 millimeter diameter um, often when I'm pinning silk I go through twice so I'll go through I'll go through once and then I go through twice like that and that will really stop them dropping out now when you're pinning I can't really see that on the pattern I'll do it on the I'll do it on the calico so if this was a fine fabric with your uh, pin I would go through once and go through twice on a silk and that will stop your pin dropping out. When you're pinning, now there's lots of, there's lots of um, theories about pinning. I like to use my pins like a tacking. Uh, so I like to pin basically along my stitching line. So if your, stitch, if your seam allowance is one and a half centimetres or five eighths, then you're going to be doing your pinning at roughly that distance away from the edge. And then that's going to be holding your fabric in the right place. If you have your raw, if you're right handed, have your raw edges away from you when you're pinning and then when you go to the sewing machine they'll be in the right direction to pull out as you sew. If you're left handed have the fabric raw edges towards you because you'll be pinning this way and I can't pin left handed <laughs> uh, and then the, then the pins will be in the right direction. So when you're sewing on the machine you'll come up to the just in front of your pin, stop with the needle down, take your pin out and then move on to the next one. So those, those three really are my everyday pins I use, the two types of glass headed pins depending on the fabric and the silk pins for my silk. Um, if you uh, like something uh, more to grab hold of, we also do a couple of different pins with big ends like Why this. Why don't you pin horizontally oh, like you often see on Instagram way. but why don't you like doing A lot that? of people when they start to sew they, they pin this way because they think it's quick. Uh, you see a lot and, of influencers yeah, doing it. And you, they think, oh, I can go over here and sew over the pins. Please don't sew over your pins. It's the quickest way to break a needle, uh, and that, will, that could easily, apart from breaking the needle, throw the, throw the um, uh, timing on your machine. But also, I find that if I pin this way, every time you come up to your pin, you get a little, little, dump, a little bump of fabric, which is then going to get pushed to the next pin. And by the time you get to the end, your two ends won't meet. Um, so I, I find that, and also if you've got a, fi a fine fabric, in between here, your fabric's going to dip away. It's going to dip, not with calico, but it's going to move. So you'll find yourself trying to hold your ends together in between the pins, as well as, as, well as um, trying to avoid that little bump of fabric. Because the feed dogs pull the fabric through from underneath, and the top one's got nothing apart from the foot holding it. So um, obviously, it, I mean, it is personal choice which way you pin. I'm just giving you the way that I like to do it. Well, I always used to do that because you see it on yeah. social media and whatever. Yeah, people pin that way because they think they can pin this way. But where, if you pin that way, where's your seam allowance? Where are you actually going to be stitching? Are you stitching here or here or here? Where are you trying to... The, the idea of pinning is to hold your fabric together while you're stitching it. So if you pin exactly on your seam allowance, then it's like tacking. Barbie so, said the in out in out technique is so good and yeah. always uses the full length of the pin, it not does. just the tiny bit like in the that, middle. That bit there. So you're using like, like Barbie says, the whole length of the pin if you're using a nice long one, particularly on a slippery fabric. So that's a really useful one. Often the no most annoying thing with pins is that they drop out of your fabric while you pick them up to go to the machine. Um, so so yes, yeah, so do do try and practice pinning. You know, it, may, it might mean you haven't got to tack something because sometimes if you, you think, well, I might need to tack that seam, but if you pinned it, even sleeves. A lot of people, when they're putting a sleeve in, will put loads and loads of pins in all this way, all next to each other, like this. And then they wonder why, when they, take, when they get their sleeve out, there's lots of little tucks or gathers in their sleeve. It's because every time a little bit of fabric is getting bunched up to that pin. So try, try pinning as if you're tacking like that. The only time I put a pin in that way is if I'm trying to match a seam. Then I might put a pin in that way just to hold two seams at the right at the right level so I can stitch right up to it and then take the well, pin like out. Well like through a dot. Yeah. yeah. If you're trying to match something very particular and, and this is not going to be quite in the right place because if, if you have it this way, if you put it through your dot there, you're going to be taking the pin out before you've reached your dot. So that's the only time I'll put a pin in that way is when I'm trying to match a seam. I don't know, like two seams cross over each other. So a couple of other different pins 
that I might, I, I don't tend to use these, but they are, a lot of people like these larger headed pins, uh, particularly if you're working with knitwear or something that's quite bulky because you need something bigger to be able to see. Uh, and also I think quilters use these as well because they're flat and you, again, they're long and you can put them through multiple layers. Um, I do use these quilters pins, which are very long and again glass headed. And I use these, um, I use these in my copy and make it workshop. It's only to mark the pattern because you can see they're really quite thick. So I wouldn't use these um, to pin my, my fabrics together. I do use them to go through the fabrics to mark a pattern when I'm doing copy it, make it. So again, they're glass headed, so they're nice and nice and robust. Really big, oh, really big box. You get those as well. You get a hundred pins in there. They're very useful for copy it, make it. If you have a lot of people have, uh, um, if you're having problems with your hands, if you're slightly arthritic, you can get what's called easy grab pins. So if you find the glass headed pins still too difficult to get hold of, you can grab, you can get these ones and this is what they look like. I've got one in here. Oh, you dropped, dropped it. it. There it is. These are easy easy grasp or easy grab pins. In America they closer, in America they have what's called um, magic pins, which are very similar uh, to these ones. They might have slightly longer heads, I think. These are easy grasp. They're, so if you have trouble with your hands, these are very good and easy to get hold of easy to grab they are I think they're plastic headed that's the only thing so you can't iron over these yeah we were looking the ones in America the magic pins are silicon yeah which is so better because you can iron over them but. lovely Linda Mary's friend Linda who I don't think is watching this has offered to get some for me Hooray! because um, of the company the wholesaler in America I can't get them from so I might be getting the magic pins available here soon but in the meantime these are great these are really good pins and uh, they're much easier I know Suzanne uses these uh, and Barbara. Yeah, Barbara finds them much easier. Yeah, so some people find those easier to grab hold of than these ones. Um, if you haven't got, I, I find oh, yeah, these easy. Julie says, love magic pins. Yeah, magic pins. Magic pins or easy grasp pins are really good. If you're looking for something really special, um, when, when I was reading a blog the other day, I was saying to the ladies in the sewing room today that she was reading a blog from a lady who says that every year, like I was saying about if your pins go a little bit rusty or they snag on your fabric to throw them away, every year she throws all her pins out and buys, buys new ones. Now I wouldn't do that with my lovely, with my lovely glass headed pins, I would only do that if I had very cheap pins I think. I mean, you know, it's, it's all of my pins are lovely and I know, um, I know people like Claire Schaefer have two boxes. They have a box, if they have a box, if I have a box of pins, they will use some of them and put them in a separate box. So if they haven't used their whole box, they always keep a box that's got just new pins in them. So you can have a box of used pins and a box of new pins. But, you know, generally pins are last quite a while, these lovely glass-headed ones. And I especially wouldn't throw my pins away if I was using tulip pins. Now, if you come to the sewing room, you may have heard us talk about um, tulip pins and needles. They're made in Japan and they are the most lovely pins. They're more expensive, obviously, because they are quite special. They are £6.50 for a um, box, whereas these ones are £4.50 or £3 a box. But they are um, the Japanese have, have created a way of making their pins and needles by, um, instead of polishing, instead of them going in a big drum and being polished around like this, they're polished up the shank. So they slide through your fabric and as soon as you start using them it's very difficult to use anything different because they are so good. And there are quite a few different ones. Um, the ones which I use mostly for dressmaking are their patchwork pins. These are their patchwork pins, which are best for dressmaking. Um, they kind of love. They all come in these lovely test tubes as well. They're glass headed. Uh, this one I think you get 50 in a pack. Of these ones. 60. 60 in a pack. And they're lovely length. They're the as best well. value. The patchwork. Yeah, the patchwork. You get 60, and they're a nice length. They're slightly longer than my everyday pins. Lovely glass headed pins and they just, you can use this instead of silk pins actually because they are, they will glide through your, any fabrics. And they, they don't bend, they sort of, they, they give, but they don't bend. So they just go through your fabrics really beautifully. So again, I keep them separately. I keep them, like I've got my tulip needles in my little thing here. I keep my tulip pins separately as well, in separate boxes. 
at home. It's different here in the same room because I've got pins all over the place, but at home I have my tulip pins separate. So the patchwork pins are the nice long ones, and then you can get really lovely applique pins, which are much shorter. Uh, in the applique pins are, again, you get you 60, get 60 but they're much smaller. So if you really like very short pins, look how short these are. If I put them on there. So if you do, if you want very short pins, if you're doing very fine work, that's the patchwork or everyday pins and that's the applique pins. So I think people who do heirloom stitching or work with very fine fabrics and these shorter pins, then the patchwork, the, the tulip applique pins are perfect for that. They then do a range of um, cellulose head pins, uh, which come in boxes of there's only 15 in these packs actually, so not so many in these packs. So they are they do tend to be people who love them and keep them separate and collect them as well. There's two different types of these. There's a tulip head and they call this one Momaji. Momaji. So tulips and momaji. So those ones are very nice as well. Nice long pins, again, similar to the flower headed pins that we do. Nice for thicker fabrics and knitwear, that sort of thing. And then they do their glass-headed pins. Now these, people do collect these, they are lovely. Um, these are hand-blown glass-headed pins and they are really pretty. There are four different types. I don't know if you can see those, but they're marbled, marbled ends. Closer to the camera. Marbled yeah. ends. I know, but went can you yet. see those? They're marbled. Can you, you can see sort that? Of, there you go, you can see it behind my hand. Yeah. They're really pretty. So there are four different types of those and they are lovely really lovely pins and you can sort of collect those and use them so i think there's one that's the one of them even has a little glass in the middle of it it does I think they're it's the, the shizuku yeah they, they, so these are 20 in a pack and there's there's the different blues um this the is the, so the blues of sakuro is pastels and they're based on things like the uh, cherry blossom trees and things like that in japan and these are the pink ones as well there's the akari so there's a 20 in a pack of those, and then the these ones, which are the Shizuko. Now, th there are only 10 in this pack, but they are hand-blown with little tiny... Can you see those? Do you want me to take them out of the box? They've got little... They're like patterns inside glass. So they're really special. Um, yeah, they're like glass... Glass colour inside the clear glass. Yeah. So there are lots of different ones of the tulip and I know a lot of people once you start using them it's very difficult not to use them uh, and if, you know if you look after them then they're not gonna need replacing every year like this uh, in this blog that I saw so I wouldn't replace mine every year if I've spent money on my pins unless they are going blunt or they get bent so you've got your pins and then you have to think about how you want to store them and like I say the tulip ones I do keep a lot of my tulip things in their uh, test tubes um, but if you've got some nice pin, uh, pin storage, then you could just keep those separate pins on different pin storage. So having something like a pin dish, these are magnetic pin dishes. Um, oh, I thought these are great, they're so strong. They're really strong magnets, these ones. You can see that, but they don't come out. Um, and they're very good. If you drop your pins on the floor, then you've just got to turn that up and you've got to hoover them all up with your pin dish. They come in black and gold. And then we have our new ones. I mentioned a few weeks ago Ethel and Joan, the buttons and buckles that we have. We also have the Ethel and Joan magnetic pin dishes. So they've got a cork back and they hold uh, pins as well. They don't hold as many as these, but they're a nice uh, way to keep your special pins by your sewing machine. It's one of the easy grab ones there. On your sewing machine, there are a couple of ways that you could keep your uh, pins on your sewing machine. These little suction pin cushions stick to your table or to your sewing machine, they're padded like that. Or, this huh? is a good one. I'm never very keen on this, but it's very popular, look at this. It's a, it's a suction uh, cap magnet, which you can put onto the front of your sewing machine. And you can throw your pins at it and they'll stick to it. That's so you can see it there, look. Can you see that on the uh -huh. front? That's a very useful thing to have by your sewing machine just to keep your pins tidy. This is the traditional magnetic pin cushion, um, just a, a, a sort of a pin dish, very useful. And then there are a couple of different types of wrist pin cushion. This one I like, this is the um, 
Oh, if I can get that on. This is the uh, the, the um, strap one, which you can just attach to your wrist. And I use this one normally when I'm doing fittings and things because I want my pins. I don't know that. Um, I want my pins close by so that I can just grab them and, and do fittings and hem shortenings and things like that. A different version of that would be the one with the padded top as well, so whichever one you like. It's always nice to have um, pins on your wrist when you're sewing. So there's so much choice in the type of storage for your pins, as long as if you're working with uh, these lovely special ones, you keep them separate from everything else and label them. One of the last thing I wanted to show you was if your fabric, if you're working with a fabric like uh, a leather or something you don't want to pin but you need to hold together, this is a like a pleather, I might not want to pit, put pins through that. I would use uh, Wonder Clips. These are great little clips, I don't know if I can get one off of here without breaking the pack. But they're just little clips that you can just clip to your fabric and use instead of pins and you're not going to get holes. I don't use them on fine fabrics because they can be a bit heavy, but they're great on leather, uh, pleather, quilted, sort of quilted thick fabric when you're making bags. They're fantastic. So an alternative to pins are wonder clips. So I hope that was helpful. Mm -hmm. I've gone through all of, all of the pins I can think so of. Much about I, bet, pins. I bet there's something I've forgotten. I bet, I'm sure there's something I've forgotten to show you. But anyway, that's all the pins that I use. I do use wonder clips when I'm working with leather. Um, or quilted fabrics, they're very useful. So if you have any questions about pins? Um, Retractable tape measures stretch they and do. become inaccurate. And a lot of tape measures stretch, actually, so it's always worth double-checking every now and then, um, because when you're pushing them around you a lot, they could stretch and go and go narrower as well. So it's what I use, I tend to change my tape measures. Um, I use just a, the basic, where's the ones on the shelf there? Oh, sorry. That's a Merchant and Mills one, but that's a bit wide. I tend to use the standard ones. I'll tell you why I use these ones. I use these ones just a standard tape measure because the width of this tape measure is one and a half centimetres or five eighths wide. So if I want to change a, change a seam allowance, I can just draw along the edge of the tape measure. Um, this is nice, but it's a bit wider. This one, I'm not sure how wide this one is. That is, well, that's two centimetres wide, so at least you know. Um, but yeah, it's definitely worth checking your tape measures. If they're quite old, make sure they are accurate. I like my Merchant Mills one because it's mm. nice, feels nice on your neck. Catherine, do quick come picks become blunt? Yes, they do. Yes, absolutely. They don't. They, yes, as soon as it's not cutting a stitch, just test it on a stitch. If it's not cutting, throw it away and get a new one. You really want the sharp mm. quick come pick. The little blade at the bottom is the bit that you want to be sharp. So yeah, they do. Especially the little cheap ones that come with the sewing machines. Oh, that's good. Free quick come pick. In the last five minutes. You could do it lots of unpicking. So yes, definitely retractable ones because they're being pulled out and sucked back in all the time. You can check it against a new one just to make sure, uh, Julie. Definitely. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah. The thing is to not not put up with pins that are difficult. Get get nice new pins. That's what I say. Make your life easier. Don't struggle with long pins. Right, I'm going to move my stuff out of the way. If you have any more questions, do just ask them. But I know Amy wants to come in because she's got a lovely cocktail for us yes, today. Yes, I do. So sorry, Instagram. I won't get to see your comments. I'm going to move over. You won't Ooh, mind. Well it's very comfortable sitting there talking about pins. Yeah, did you just? <laughs> I think Amy's coming in. The only thing I have trouble with is, I love this, but my, my watch strap is magnetic as well. Look at that. I end up with <laughs> of pins on my watch strap. Hello. We're, we came to work in the same dress today. Yeah, we didn't We didn't talk about what we were wearing. No, we? so but we... to be honest, in this heat, it is the most comfortable dress. I've yes. worn it so much this summer already. I think I've worn it three times this week. Because <laughs> I don't have anything else as comfortable as this. It's great, isn't it? Yes. I love it. So we're Amy. twins, yeah, twinnies yeah. today. And Amy's got the, oh, look, the bent here. Uh, Amy's got um, an extra frill on the bottom. Oh yeah, I so just we... used as much fabric as I could, so I added a frill. See, yeah. on the bottom. It's very pretty. 
We'll take lots of pictures, yeah, there'll be lots of pictures. There's Particularly of costume changes. Uh, is that, yes, it's the McCall pattern, yeah, yeah. McCall's Same one. dress. 7969, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, so garden party tomorrow. I just can't believe it's come around already. Oh, no. Down Very exciting, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we are, I still haven't put that on the website. Oh, okay. <laughs> the winter Which soiree. Part? Uh, we are going to be doing on the 3rd of December, Saturday the 3rd of December. I will get it on the website this weekend so you can get your tickets and we're going to do that at the Royal Oak as well because their lovely marquee that we have our summer party in, they've now got glass doors for so it can be used in the winter as well and they have Perfect. big fire pits inside and stuff. And we do so, like it there, yeah, so we're going to do a similar event for Christmas and we can all wear our sparkly dresses for that. Um, little update on the cruise next year is nearly sold out. We only have three places left for the full trip, but interestingly, this time round, we have two spaces available for New York only. So if you were thinking you wanted to maybe come, but you weren't keen on the cruise part of it, that is an option next year because two ladies uh, from America are just joining us on the cruise, not in the New York part because they already know where to go and everything. So um, if you're interested, put me an email and be great. I just can get you a quote. Yeah, just yeah. come and do the five days in New York. Good plan. Fabric shopping, then you can fly home yeah. when we all get on the boat. <laughs> um, so yes, do get in touch. I still have some inquiries coming out. So if, you're, if you've been umming and ahhing, there's not much left. There's not many spaces left. And we might not do it for two years. And the next one probably won't be till 25, mm. 2025. Yeah. Um, okay, I think that's all from me. Oh, there are any updates on the other retreats? No, not really, really fully everything's booked. fully booked, yeah. so <laughs> sorry about that. Well, there's space on the Couture retreat next June, oh, yeah. and I'm there awesome. are two places left on next November's Dartington Totnes retreat. 2023. 2023 November, there are two places available. Um, yes, so I'm going to move on to a cocktail because it's so hot and I need a refreshing drink. We need a refreshing drink. What have we got as a nice refreshing we drink? We are having something julep. Champagne julep. That's you my brain. I was like, champagne what? I was going to say champagne mule. No. <laughs> champagne julep. Um, today, I found a my, one of my favourite cocktail references. Sometimes if I'm thinking of a cocktail, I just double check the recipe and the amounts because I don't have all of them in my head. We all need our own reference guides. And one of my favourites is liquor.com, but my other favourite is Difford's Guide. And today I discovered that if you sign up to Difford's Guide, it's free, it doesn't cost anything, you just enter your details, you can then go on and enter all of the ingredients in your drinks cabinet, every type of liquor and liqueur and everything you've got, and it will give you a suggestion of all the cocktails you can make. That's fantastic. How good is that? That's so brilliant. if you've got all these random things in your drinks cabinet, go on to Difford's Guide, build your ingredients up and they'll tell you what cocktail. Okay. You can do a random one, so you just click send me a random cocktail. Or I had a list, it was like 10 pages long from oh. those 10 ingredients I've got in there. And then you just top it up with mint and stuff. Oh, thank you, Julie. She's been looking so well. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> so for a champagne julep, you need there's a few ingredients to this. Um, brandy, Angostura bitters. Everyone's got that. Everyone's got those in their cabinet. Mm -hmm. Some mint, some sugar syrup, and some champagne. Oh, we've got our little bottle. We've got our little bottle of champagne. When you when you go onto the cruise, we're still talking about it, I'm afraid. Sorry. This is our little cruise bottle that you're given when you check in. Yeah. In the fridge. Well, we're we'll giving an extra one. We'll 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 So, we want some ice first of all in our shaker. I've got to try and get this bowl out now. I had to separate because I've got two types of ice. Oh, and you've crushed ice as well? Yeah. Oh. That's very good. Thanks. So clever. 
Thank you. Okay, so then we want um, around eight to ten mint leaves per person. So I've already counted these out for us. Into the shaker. Per person, 15 mils of your cognac, preferably, but brandy is fine. So 15, 30. So and then Maggie will be counting. Yeah, I'll just do a little bit more, Maggie, because that was only 25. Brandy goes in. Oh, no, I need that. Then 7.5 mils. This is because of the very precise. Ounces, aren't they? Of sugar syrup. You'd have to get an ounce shaker for that. Yeah, it's I need to better. get some. Okay, and Angostura bitters, a couple of dashes, or well, one dash per person, so... Angostura bitters is actually really alcoholic. Very it? alcoholic, so you don't want more than a couple of dashes. You couldn't drink it, basically. You would be very ill. Okay, so first you're going to shake that. You're then going to, which is going to be tricky to do, well then you have to put the champagne in and give it a double shake. Oh, that sounds risky. It is a bit risky <laughs> because it's not easy with the Boston shaker that's just been used, but we're going to go for it. Shall I stand back? You'll be fine. It's not going to explode, <laughs> hopefully. They're so cute. So I am actually going to be accurate with the measuring because it's a hundred mils per person of champagne. Sorry. Should have saved everything. Should have saved everything. So I'm just going to let's do the double shots. Yeah, these are doubles. Of four of these. It's very educational. Isn't it? And mathematical. Very scientific. Mm -hmm. I'm actually getting sugar syrup. So then you would just want to get your. And you're just going to do a double. Like that. So it's mixed it through nicely. And then you want mule glasses or julep glasses. So I have these copper jugs. And the reason is it'll keep it super chilled for you. And we're just going to do a single strain, so just put your Hawthorne strainer straight in there. Smells lovely. I think drinks, uh, drinks with mint in smell so fresh. Don't it? Super fresh. There we go. So that goes in, and then top it up with some crushed ice. Crushed earlier. I wonder what that noise was in the kitchen. Me crushing ice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of water here. Hydrating. Yeah, it's very hydrating. Yeah. There's a, there's a drought on. There's a drought on. There we go. And then you just have some mint sprigs. Oh, look at you and your garnishes and everything. The day. In there. And metal straws so it's super cool lovely you could oh, then if you like top it with more champagne which we might have to do yeah. cheers, cheers everybody cheers happy summer mm. super refreshing that's really nice oh you must try that one it's lovely a nice about the champagne super refreshing mm. i think we just have a little mm. yeah we have got quite a bit to do tonight We've got to get ready for our garden party tomorrow. Yes, yes we do. Can't waste the champagne. No, we can't. <laughs> I've got to drink it. Got to drink it. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's really, I love that one. It's nice, really nice, right? It's really lovely, yeah. Mm. Mm. Didn't know you could buy sugar syrup. Yeah. So my favourite sugar syrup, Mary, is Monin. Mm. Syrup, the brand Monin, and it'll be called Gom or Gum. You should be able to get it on Amazon. Super easy. Mm -hmm. And my top tip is try and get the plastic bottle. <laughs> because the glass bottle it breaks 
breaks and mm. sugar syrup breaking on your floor is not something it's you not want good. to deal with. It's, it's not really good, is it, Mark? No, it's not, not good. good. It's really not good. <laughs> Voices of experience. Is it in the shade or should I bring a sun hat? So tomorrow we do have use of their marquee. Um, so it'll be in and out. Yeah. We'll be in and out. There'll be umbrellas. Yeah. But I would bring a hat because yeah. it'll be nice yeah. to be outside for some of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. It is delicious, Jackie. Really it nice. is really delicious. Yeah. It's really lovely. So very good. Mm. Mm. Very nice. Lovely. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. Enjoy the sunshine. Yeah, so we'll see lots of you, uh, lots of you tomorrow at the garden party. Really looking forward to that. And we'll get dressed up and sit in the sunshine and drink pims <laughs> and a cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today on this very hot evening. Uh, enjoy your stay. We'll see you in a few weeks. I think it might be three weeks again because we've got quite a lot going on. But we will, we will let you know when we're going to be back. So. See you all soon. Thank you for Bye joining us. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.